welcome back everybody to Ladybug Lane Soaps and this is Margie your hostess for the mostess and thank you everybody for joining me today and I hope wherever you are that you are well and safe and staying uh, healthy. So today I'm going to be remaking Love Spell which is just a delicious uh, smelling fragrance oil. It has a lot of the nectarines and strawberries and it's just so dang yummy and so I'm going to be using my 12 pound mold from Nurture Soap and I usually have the recipe at about um, 130 ounces of oils and so it's usually just kind of a little uh, shy on the top so so I'm going to yeah so I bumped this up to 140 and let's see, so I already have my kaolin clay in here. I have my sodium lactate, which I use about one teaspoon per every pound of oils. And for the kaolin clay, um, I think I use like about a, yeah, about a teaspoon, a teaspoon per pound of oils. Alrighty, and so for the colors, I'm going to, probably have a little bit less of the white for the for the base but I'll just kind of see how it goes I'll I have a couple of oranges here both from nurture soap uh, this is the electric orange mica powder and then this is the orange vibrance um, it's kind of hard to tell I think the orange vibrance might be a little bit on the brighter side, so I'll I better make a decision on that one really fast. And for the yellow, I, I honestly don't have that many yellows. Um, so this is the sunshine yellow, and that's what that looks like. And then here is a little sample of the yellow vibrant so I might just kind of throw a little bit of each of that in and so I thought a nice contrasting color would be this raspberry red um, also from nurture so alrighty and then I'll probably be doing some some sort of piping on the top so I'll let let you know about that when I get to it so alrighty gang let's get going
Alrighty, I am back and it has probably been about an hour. It, this little puppy took quite a while for it to set up. And so, I never know with this mold that is still kind of new to me. Well, I mean, I bought it around Christmas time. And I'm still trying to figure out, you know, just how much batter to save. So, for this raspberry red, this tip is a Wilton 2D. It's just kind of a, a little bit more uh, curved in. And then for the yellow and the orange, those are 1Ms. And those kind of sounds like I'm talking about bra sizes or something, huh? So let's see. So I'm going to be cutting the bars going this way. So I want... I probably need to put the colors, yeah, going that way. It sure feels like I saved way too much. Okay, and this raspberry red definitely set up. Uh, sooner. Oh, look at that. That's. I really didn't want it to be popping up like that. Use a little bit more pressure. I'm going to redo that one. Okay. So I want red, orange, yellow. Red, orange, yellow. Goodness, what was that? Yeah, see, that's the consistency. I was looking for... May 12th, my husband and I, we will be celebrating our, oh, that was my carpal tunnel, ouch. We'll be celebrating our, come on, our 30th wedding anniversary, and um, yeah, we won't be able to go anywhere, but you know, that's that's all right. Our, our health is more important than going out and having a party. We just got to do what we need to do, right? You know what? I definitely saved too much of this red, but maybe I can go back. Maybe just make these things a little bit fatter. Yeah. So, anyway. So, I'm just trying to think of a story for you all. Let's see. Another farmhouse story. Let's see. Let's see. So I think I mentioned in one of the past videos that we had bought the place from, oh, what was her name? Veronica? Oh, that, that was the wife, Veronica, and and I went crooked, didn't I? Uh, and the husband's name, gosh, I can't, I'm not quite sure what the husband's name was. But that's the couple that I mentioned that had lived up in... Taylor, Washington, and then they moved down the hill to Southeast 208, and they had bought this 20-acre farm, and of course, at the time, 
they had it cleared. It was all full of, of, of cedar trees. And so they had these draft horses, and I believe they were Perchons, the uh, beautiful silver ones, gray, silver, you know what I mean. And I remember seeing the pictures of the horses. Let's see, I think it was after... After the, uh, af yeah, after Mrs. Lazar had passed away, and I remember being being at her funeral, and so there was all these really neat pictures that her daughter had had brought, and you know pictures that I've never seen before, and and so when we bought the the farm up in the uh, barn loft there was all of these I mean huge um, harnesses and of course draft horses are definitely larger than your uh, normal horse like a thoroughbred or Appaloosa or whatever have you and so I believe we sold those harnesses but yeah, that was, yeah, I don't know how many of my viewers live on a farm or, or used to live on a farm or maybe your parents or grandparents used to live on a farm. And I definitely saved way too much of this red. Okay. But like I think I mentioned, my father and his father, they were all born in North Dakota. Yep, my dad was born in Langdon, which is, oh, if I'm, if I'm saying this right, it might be like about, is it, was it 70 miles away from the Canadian border? So it got quite, quite cold during the winter time. So when the opportunity came, uh, I, I believe my dad was working at Puget Power at the time. And we were living in Seattle, actually just down the street where my folks were married and their folks and their folks, which would have been my great grandparents. Uh, they were married at the St. Edward's Catholic Church in Seattle. And so we were like within walking distance of that church. That was kind of neat. Um, yeah, so my dad was a reader meter for Puget Power. And so he really, really wanted to raise his kids on the farm or on a farm. And so he had his, his co-workers... Um, just kind of being on the lookout for for a farm and so here was uh, this 20 acre farm and the one of the sons they had three sons and one of the sons was Johnny Lazar and I don't know if you guys ever remember him He played baseball. Oh gosh. Um, no, I can't think of the team, but that's all right. Um, yeah, so so he played in the majors and he was kind of like a hometown uh, farm boy, you know, done done good. Um, and so, he worked with my dad, you know, uh, financially, because um, he, because uh, Johnny Lazar, he really wanted our family to to buy the farmhouse. You know, maybe he was afraid that 
um, some other family was gonna, you know, put other houses on it. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that was just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful childhood, and I'm just so thankful for my parents. You know, who gave us such a wonderful childhood. And and I remember my poor dad. He'd be working so many hours of overtime. And then when he would get home, he was so tired that he would come upstairs and uh, open up the windows. It kind of had one of those, you know, sash windows. And... And then the wind would blow just right, you know, and it would it'd be whistling. It'd be whistling through the um, crack in the window. Oh, my gosh. And then I remember he would just, just conk out because he was so tired. Bless his heart. So, yeah. So if you've had a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful childhood gang, you know, thank, thank your parents. All right, folks. There it is. That uh, raspberry red is a little little spiky there but you know what I guess I can live with that oh look what I did oh well so okay guys I'll see you back at the cut alrighty welcome back to ladybug lane soaps and oh here is the 12 pounds of the love spell and oh it sure smells good but oh gosh it's heavy so I want to get it get it sliced up here See what that looks like. Yeah, that turned out nice. I don't know what the heck that is. Huh. Okay. I have to fix that up. Huh. Yeah. That turned out nice. <laughs> 